Great. I think next up is Victor Owasu. Um, go, Victor, as we change people here. Yeah. He looks up to his colleague. <laughs> Victor, welcome, welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, okay, so um, Victor, as uh, you mentioned, so I'm going to start from the Picatatis Forest. Uh, so in the background, you can see the forest. It's, a, it's not a very huge forest. It's a hilly lowland forest, a very dense forest, uh, because that is um, where the bed, the Picatatis will survive. Um, it's surrounded with um, farm bushes and some communities. So that's me. So um, this is the bed. This is what um, we all look out for. So it's a small, medium-sized bed with a long neck and um, um, a very long tail. Um, that is between 38 to 41 centimeters long. Um, they are, so the head you see is bare. And it is featherless head uh, with a with a bright yellow bare head. Uh, you can see some three folds um, hair on it. So that is the only hair on the bear's head. Um, they are usually found in rocky forest with high altitude in a, in a lowland forest. Um, so that is with a picatatis, has a very bright yellow head and moves in the forest and through a series of hops and bouncing around with short flights, feeding on um, small insects um, and then also on caterpillars, grasshoppers, cockroaches, but sometimes would feed the young ones with small frogs and lizards but it doesn't feed on, on frogs, except for when they are breeding. Um, they breed uh, twice in a year. That is from, from um, March to June, and then from um, September to no uh, November. They are monogamous. That is, they keep one partner and then share the incubation period and as well as feed the young ones. They usually have their nests around streams or very close to streams or rivers. So once we arrive in the village, we take a short walk, uh, not a very short walk, uh, but we take a, a walk of about between 30 to 40 minutes, slowly in the forest. Um, the forest is very humid because it's a small um, hilly lowland forest with high altitude. So we take a very slow walk, walk gradually for about 40 minutes. And then when we get there, we sit on a bench. We arrange ourselves in such a way that we have opportunity of seeing the birds from coming from, uh, um, the birds coming in from different angles, but we face the, the rock. So this is the nest um, built with mud and then lined, the inside is lined with fibers and small roots. So this is a group of birders enjoying the picatatis in this video. And the bird is not shy and it allows for photographs. So if you are someone who is uh, interested in photographs, you have a very big opportunity of seeing them as um, they come as close as between five to 15 meters away from us. Um, some of them are very inquisitive. They try to, uh, you know, to come close to whatever is around. Um, somebody mentioned about community service and how the village is benefiting. So uh, our trips here is aimed at, at providing a positive impacts on the surrounding uh, communities through education and then local based projects. And 
providing economic opportunities to the villagers. Um, this is to help preserve the Picatatis forest and the birds, as um, a lot of logging and hunting goes around in the village because um, they have nothing to do, they have no school or hospital around. So um, you go in there, um, help, will help a lot to put up some of these uh, social amenities. We have started with a school and hopefully they'll get a hospital because there's no hospital around. Um, serving about 10 communities with 600 kids in this school. So once we see the Picatatis and then we come back to the lodge, we spend two days in Picatatis. Um, this is to explore the forest because the forest is very good and that is the only place you can see the wattle cuckoo shrike, the Ghana wattle cuckoo shrike. Um, it's also a very good forest for green bulls and you know, floor bears like Alite, forest robin. But at the moment, the red chested owlet is a very good spot. In uh, the Picatatis forest, it's a very good spot for the red chested owlet. A uh, fire-bellied woodpecker is also an endemic, one of the biggest, one of the large woodpeckers we have in the forest. Um, the forest is endowed with a lot of uh, forest woodpeckers, including the melancholy woodpecker, the little green woodpecker, and sometimes the African piculet. So from Picatatis, we do a long journey to Moli National Park for a change of um, habitats and weather. Um, the forest area is more humid. Once we go up the north, it is more dry uh, with short trees. Hey, Victor, can we just take a quick break and see if anybody has Sarate. any questions about the Picatarate forest? Okay. Any, any, any questions about the Picatarate forest before we move on to Mole? Why don't we take one or two questions? Hearing none, sorry for the interruption, my, my friend. You're doing a great job, and uh, right. we look forward to hearing about the Mole area. Thank, thank you very much. Okay, you're welcome. So this is um, the Mole National Park, um, situated in the northern part of the country. Um, it is the largest national park we have, with a size of 4,577 Square kilometers uh, with 334 bird species, 90 mammals, reptiles, and amphibians. So, um, this is the Moli Terrace overlooking the water holes. Um, usually, we bed here during the afternoon when people, some people don't want to sleep um, and they want to take and relax by the Terrace to overlook the elephant coming to the pool and some you know, sun beds coming around. Uh, Moli is a very good place for Franklins. There are two um, fr Franklins that we have a very great chance of seeing. That is the white throated Franklin and the double spread Franklin. This is usually seen in November to May when the grasses dry up because uh, it's very difficult to see them when the grasses are thick and dense. False plover. This is also a very good plover that lives on dry open plains. One of the target species of birds we look out for in Mole. Uh, one of my favorite birds which is also active um, from November to, to May. At the, at, that is the breeding period for the birds. Because they have a very soft call, they developed these extra feathers to attract the females and to make them see them easily for breeding. Uh, Mole is also endowed with, um, with the owls, and one of the owls we look out for in Mole is the northern white face. Um, we have the, uh, the grayish eagle owl. We have the 
We also have the African Scops Owl. We have the elusive um, pearls fishing owl also to be seen in Mali. So Mali has a great deal of owls. Rufus Ramp Black, not very colorful, but one of the difficult in the Sahel. If you see one, you have to be very lucky to catch your eyes on this very good bird. Uh, one of the very common bee eaters you would see in Moli, uh, in Moli National Park is the red-throated bee eater. Uh, they move in big numbers, very big numbers in the morning and then late in the evening. The ground hornbill a rather very bizarre bird to see, um, very, very, you know, slowly walking on the ground, usually on the path whilst we are driving in the park. Molly is also rich um, in five inches wax bills and very small uh, feed, feed it, um, seed eaters. Um, the first bird on your screen is the black bellied fire finch. Um, the two behind it is the bar breasted fire finch. There are other species like the black faced fire finch, the red bill fire finch, and then there are also some wax bills that feed alongside with them, like the orange cheeked wax bill, the black ramp wax bills, and some lavender wax bills. Um, the exclamatory paradise wider um, also breeds um, in the wet season in the north, which begins from August to um, mid November. So that is the time you see this bird with its long tail. Um, if you come in the dry season in the north, you see them looking like the females, and it's very difficult. To look out for. There are other colorful birds during that time, like the northern red bishop, the yellow crown bishop, and the black wing bishop, which is all easily identified during the wet season. Um, the northern part is endowed with a lot of um, raptors, and then the foot wing snake eagle is one of them. There are other uh, raptors that we are we expect to see, like the Marshall Eagle, the African Hawk Eagle, the Wilbex Hawk Eagle, Ice Hawk Eagle, the Brown Eagle, and the Brown Snake Eagle, and many other uh, small raptors and estipitus. This is um, Grasshopper Buzzard, also intra-African migrants, um, like bent areas moves in big flocks when areas are being bent. Talking of mammals, Moli has a lot of uh, mammals. I think the, the last time we checked, there were about 800 mammal um, elephants. Sorry, there were about 800 elephants patrolling the parks, moving from the northern part of um, Moli up to Burkina Faso. So they have this annual ritual that they they move on. Um, the African buffalo is one of the species we are likely to see. Uh, bush bucks is also part of the menu in Mali. So that is about Mali National Park. If anybody has a question. Okay. So um, from Moli National Park, we move on further north of the country, and that is Bolaga Tanga Square. Um, Bolaga, it's um, the landscape in Bolaga is um, it's a broad savanna grassland with a dotted, um, nice looking uh, baobab trees scattered in the region. Um, in Bolgatanga Square, we visit three places. That is the Tungo Hill, which is a, a continuous or group of mountains with a 
big rock formations. And then we want to Sapliga, where we have um, one of our main targets in the north, which is the Egyptian clover. And then Tongo Hills to also look for some sun, um, sun grasses and, and wood doves and pigeons. So this is the Tongo Hills with the rock formation. You can see it's uh, more of grass and field um, acacia trees very um, dry and very hot so we usually go to this place late in the afternoon where um, the sun has gone down to make way for easy bedding apart from that it is very hot but it's dry not humid like in the forest so the fox kestrel is uh, one of our main target species in tongo hills which we are assured of seeing it. Uh, the rock larvae testicular uh, also comes out um, late in the evening when the, the rocks have cooled down a bit and likes to display on the small rocks and the big rocks. But unfortunately in the picture we have it on a branch. We have the glossling bantam which uh, recently has been split from cinnamon breasted rock bantam, also likes to um, display on the big rocks in Tongo Hills. So this is the white water in Sapliga. Um, the Egyptian plover is, is seen in Ghana along the sandbars in, in, in the, on the white water in Ghana. Uh, we have three other um, uh, water or rivers, the black water, the white water, and then the red water, which uh, kind of meets at some point, but it prefers to be on the white water. Uh, that is where they breed and peck on small insects in the sand. So this is a flight view of uh, Egyptian plover, well patterned or designed on the back in flight. Egyptian plover on the sand. So sand grass um, usually comes around when just after dust or early in the morning. Uh, but very difficult bird to see. But uh, once we move further north in these short grasses, we spread ourselves and walk through the grasses, try to flush them. And when they fly out, we trace to see where they are sitting to have good views of them. Uh, chestnut belly starling is one of our, our targets to see further north. Um, surprisingly, they don't come down to Moli National Park, even though it's not too far from uh, Moli National Park. Northern Kamai bee eater is also one of the, the bee eaters we are. So um, this is the view of um, Tongo, uh, Tono Dam, uh, yeah. very short grass, as you can see, no trees around. Should I carry on? Please? Yeah, carry on, carry on. Okay, so um, the habitat suits photography um, rather than the dense conditions in the forest. So Abyssinia roller, um, it's a very common roller in the north. Um, and like to sit in the openings in dead branches and, and dead trees. Uh, spotted tickney is also one of our targets we look out for in Tulu Dam. Uh, usually walks in pairs in the open grassland. Um, Bruce's green pigeon is one of the uh, beautiful pigeons we have in the country and it's very common in Tulu Dam as they feed on the neem tree, which is not a native tree, but it was introduced in the country so many years ago, but has been of beneficial to, to the birds. Um, give me sunbird. It's uh, one of the many sunbirds we have in the north. We have scarlet chester sunbird, we have beautiful sunbird, we have, um, we have splendid sunbird, we have green-headed sunbird, and this is one of them. 
And then from Tono Dam, after spending two nights, uh, which is ideal because you cannot do much after two nights, we head back to the forest, uh, back to the humid area. So if there are any questions before James comes in, any question regarding the northern part of the country? Any any other questions on the, the northern part of Ghana before we wrap up here with James Mintako and the uh, Bobiris Butterfly Sanctuary area in the Atewa range? We thank all of our clients for hanging on there. Um, and if you don't have any place to go, we'd love for you to stay on. Um, and uh, we'll wrap this up and we will put the whole thing out on uh, YouTube. Any, any questions? Thank you all for your patience. Hopefully no more further technical jumps here. Uh, James Intaco, jump on my friend. Okay.